fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> When gold was first discovered in the western United States, thousands of miners and prospectors headed for the new territory. Many of them became wealthy overnight. Many more never hit pay dirt. But the greed for gold seemed to arouse the worst instincts in men. And it was in the mining country that the masked rider of the plains faced his most difficult task in the cause of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading across the desert for Cactus Death! Hello, Silver! Away! <laughs> Copper-colored sun beat down on the Lone Ranger and Tonto as they guided their horses at a slow pace toward the distant town of Cactus Gap. They followed no trail. The country through which they passed was a rock-strewn desert where cactus and sagebrush were the only vegetation. But they had chosen this route because it was a short cut to their destination. How far are we from that water hole you mentioned, Tonto? Mm, get there about noon. <coughs> down, Silver. Steady, old fellow. What's the matter, Silver? I don't know. Something's gotten into him. Steady, old boy. Nothing can harm you. You're all right, old fellow. Is it a snake you see? How to not see snake? No, do I. I wonder... These rocks were approaching, Tanto. Silver didn't act up until we got close to them. Oh, uh, maybe that it. We'll see. This way, Silver. <laughs> that hit all right. Certainly seems to be something to do with those rocks that bothers him. We're looking into this. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh Scott. Oh, fellow. Come, Tonto. We'll look behind them. Leave the horses here. Uh. Poor country for walking. Mm, he's bad. Now, this way, Kimasabi. You won't catch your moccasins on those boulders. There's a clear space here. Oh, uh, yeah. What that? It's a man. Hurry. Oh. Uh. Dead. Shot, Tonto. Murdered. Uh. Let's have a look at him. Yes, shot through the back. From the way he's dressed, I'd say he was a prospector. That right. Bearded. About 65 years old. Wouldn't that be your guess, Tonto? Uh Uh-huh. Him about that. Maybe something in his pockets to identify him. No, nothing here. Whoever's responsible for this probably went through them before we got here. Why, Fuller, come this way? It's hard to understand. If he'd been prospecting in the hill, the trail of Cactus Gap wouldn't have brought him here. Not right. Maybe someone in town will know about this. How long would you say the man's been dead, Tonto? Mm. Him not dead long. Maybe half day. Long enough to give the murderer a head start on us. 
Even Silver couldn't overcome that kind of a lead. Not right. Pato, I'll tell you what we'll do. What that? We'll build a cairn for this chap, cover him with stones. That's better than a grave in this kind of country. Uh Ah. Then we'll wait a day before asking questions. If he was expected in town, a few hours' delay wouldn't cause any alarm. But a day and a half should. Mm. Then what do? Then we'll, we'll learn what we can without mentioning what we found. The killer, no doubt, thought this fellow would be safe from discovery here. We may accomplish more if we keep the discovery to ourselves. Ah, and good idea. Of course, we may be able to spot the killer without making a secret of this. If we can, so much the better. Not right. Then give me a hand here, Kimasabi. We'll give this poor chap as decent a burial as we can. Two days later, the Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise, entered Cactus Gap, hoping to find a clue to the identity of a man he and Tonto had found out in the desert. He drifted from one cafe to another, listened casually to the gossip of the idlers, and then, acting on what he'd heard, went on to the general store owned by Granny Timmons. The sharp-tongued old woman was waiting on Abel Billings. Now then, Abel, your supplies are all packed and ready for you. Let me see the color of your cash. You know what I told you, Granny? And don't you call me Granny. I ain't your grandma, am I? It's insulting, that's what it is. You stove in old reprobate. You a dot an old digit of 60 calling a young girl like me Granny. Don't show decent respect. Oh, no. I said, here's your supplies. Now, where's my pay form? Blast it, you old hoppy. If you'd let me get a word in edgewise, I'd tell you. Careful of them names. What I calls you ain't a patch of what you've been calling me. No, nope, what I've been trying to say is that I can't pay till Jake gets to town. Well, he's here, ain't he? No, he ain't. You come in here day or four yesterday and you says to get these things together for you. You left a list of what you needed and you said Jake Bevins would be in the next day. Well, the next day was yesterday. Where's Jake? That's something I wish I knew. What kind of a looking man is Jake Bevins, Abel? Eh? Oh, howdy, stranger. You, uh, you was asking what Jake looked like? Yes. <laughs> I can tell you what it looked like, mister. Did you ever see tumbleweeds rolling across the prairie? Of course. <laughs> well, that was Jake. He was so much beard, it looked like he'd gone to weed. Surrounded by whiskers the way he was. Looking at him, you couldn't tell offhand whether he was a clump of vegetation that appeared to be a man, or a man that appeared to be a clump of vegetation. Uh, don't pay no attention to it, stranger. Jake was a right fine-looking man. How old was he? Eh, uh, don't uh, recollect Jake ever knew his own self. Looked to be somewhere in his 60s, or Say, uh, you seen him? I don't know. You've been expecting him, you say? He promised to be in town before this. What I can't see is if the two of you was done working that claim you spoke of for the season, why didn't you come into town together? Because we tossed a coin and Jake lost. He took our dust and headed for Sand City to have it changed into cash at the bank there. <laughs> What you want to do that for? Dust is as good as cash anyway. Uh-huh. But when you're paying cash, you know what it's costing you. Pay with dust and with the slick scales some of you folks in town use, you're, you're likely to pay double. Why, you honorary old hot toad. Jimmy, just stand there and say I ever cheated you with my scales. Now, now, Grandma, uh, ma'am, I never said no such thing. You better not. Sand City's on the other side of the hills. Jake had gone there, he'd have had to recross the hills to return here. But he'd have come by the regular trail, wouldn't he? Yeah, sure he would. Hey, stranger, you ain't asking these questions for nothing. What's up? You sounded worried about your partner's absence. I simply wondered what caused his delay. Well, I ain't terrible worried yet. It is so don't make a heap of difference on a trip like that. Worst thing is, I'm dead broke till he gets here. And you don't touch those supplies till he gets here to pay for them, neither. All right, all right. <laughs> Hey, what's that? That blame fool cowpoke for its daily, that's who it is. Out on a spree and letting off steam again, I'll bet. He's coming in here. Hi, Granny! What's a good word? <laughs> who, who, who's your customers? Hey, you don't need that lantern, now do you? you watch uh, out! <laughs> Yippee! How's that for shooting, Granny? Ain't lost my eye yet, have I? You get right out of here before you bust up, my friend. Oh, shucks now, Granny. Nothing to get mad about. I'm aiming for fun. I'm willing to pay for it. There. That pay for the lantern? Hmm. Reckon so. Hey, old fella. How much would you charge me to put a bullet through that hat you're wearing, huh? You leave me be, you local Renahan. <laughs> Reckon I'll shoot at it anyhow. 
Ain't much excitement in town. I gotta cook up my own. Now just stand still and you won't get hurt at all. I no, just... you don't. Ow! My arm! You're twisting it off. Drop that gun. Ow! There it is. Now stand back. You won't need this gun again today. Here, Mrs. Timmons. I think the gun will be safer in your hands. <laughs> yeah, sure. I handled him good, stranger. Sure, I'll keep it. And the crazy fool won't get it till it sobers up neither. Now look here, you can't... for your own good. A little more of that reckless shooting and you'd be getting into trouble. I don't need nobody to tell me what to do. That's just what you do need. What have you been celebrating now? <laughs> Listen to this. Hear him? Cash, that's what I got. Pockets full of cash. You seem to have quite a lot. Yeah, this is my day to howl. The way I took them tin horn gamblers over to the Silver Star Cafe was a sight to see. <laughs> they were sure glad to see me clear out. And I'll be the same. Now, you tell me what you come in here for so as I can give it to you and you can get out of here. Shucks, I didn't come in to buy nothing, Granny. Just been dropping in every place, that's all. See what's going on. Well, there ain't nothing to keep you in here. Give me my shooting iron back, won't you? Come back tomorrow and show me you're sober and you can have it, but not before. Uh, if you won't, you won't, I reckon. Afternoon, Granny. Uh, no hard feelings, stranger. Well, that's all right. Now, maybe I was just a little reckless, like. I'll be seeing you. Yippee! Get up, boy. Come on, horse. Get up there. Is he always like that? Him? <laughs> stranger, he's the wildest young fella ever was around these parts. Always celebrating something. When he wins gambling, he celebrates. If he gets a job, he celebrates. And when he gets fired, he celebrates again. Only from the sound of that cash he was carrying on, and maybe this time he had a little more reason for it. He wanted gambling, eh? What are you picking up from the floor, Abel? It's a piece of paper. It fell out of that young fellow's pocket when he paid you that cash for your lantern. And if it's what I think it is, I... Yes, sir, that's just what it is. Something important? A paper wrapper the bank over to Sand City uses for wrapping up cash. Take a look at it. I see. The bank at Sand City? Well, Fritz said he got that cash gambling. Uh -huh. And Sand City is where Jake was going to swap our desk for cash. And Jake ain't showed up here yet. What do you mean by that? I ain't saying for sure. Look here. Has that young fellow been out of town for a few days lately? I don't just savvy, Abel. What I mean is... Could he have gone to Sand City himself and got cash from the bank there? No, I don't reckon so. Seems to me he's been around town for the last month or so. Uh, just what I thought. Now where are you going, you old idiot? To tell this here something that I've got in my mind and have looked into it. If what I'm suspicion in this truth, there's a certain young fellow in this town that's going to have a heap to explain. <laughs> When Abel Billings headed for the sheriff's office, the Lone Ranger left town to rejoin his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. It was less than an hour later when he reined up in his secret camp. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Tonto. Uh, you find out who feller got killed? I can't be sure, Tonto, but I think I have. Uh, who feller? I think he's a man by the name of Jake Bevins. At least he answers the description. And I know that he was expected in Cactus Gap no later than yesterday. Hmm. I learned more than that, however. What that? Something interesting happened in the general store while I was there. A young cowboy entered with his pockets full of cash. He claimed he'd wanted gambling. That how him get cash? I don't know. But I do know, after he'd left the store, Jake's partner, April Billings, picked up one of those paper wrappers banks use to make up their packages of cash. Ah. Uh -huh. The wrapper had been issued by the bank at Sand City. And Abel said his partner had gone to Sand City to exchange dust they had panned for hard cash. Then killer... Take cash. Yes. And Abel claimed the young cowboy dropped the wrapper. Oh. Uh, what we do? I think I have a plan. I haven't got it entirely worked out yet, Kimasabi. But I will by the time we return to town. Mm, go there now? Yes. You'd better get mounted. Uh, here's Count. While we ride, there are some other things I want to tell you. Uh, uh, what then? Steady, old fellow. Yep. <laughs> some things I notice that require a great deal of explaining. Uh -huh. However, if our plan works, we'll learn the explanation. Ready, Tonto? Be ready. And let's go. I'll still get him on the dog. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, 
to continue our story. On returning to camp after a visit to Cactus Gap, the Lone Ranger confided in Tonto. He believed he had not only learned the identity of the dead man they'd discovered, but that of the killer as well. As they rode back to town, the Lone Ranger removed his disguise and put on his mask. In the meantime, Abel had found the sheriff, and the latter, at the old prospector's request, had summoned Fritz Daly to the office. You ordered me, Sheriff? Yeah. Abel here's got something on his mind, and he wanted you here before he'd say what it was. Oh. <laughs> Mad about me shooting inside the store when you was there? Is that it? Shucks, I never done no harm. Leastways, none that I didn't pay for. That he did. Huh? Well, then what Sheriff, is... Sheriff, I ain't told you what this was all about yet. Because I wanted you to see this ordinary snake's face when I told you about it. Hey, now, what kind of talk is that? I never even seen you before today. I never crossed your trail any. But you crossed my partners. Get to the point, Abel. What's this about? Hey, I reckon you know I was here waiting for Jake, don't you? I recollect telling you about it. Yeah? Well, I was waiting for him because he went to Sand City to get cash from the bank there. He likely had about $2,000 or more on him. What's that got to do with me? You'll find out soon enough. Sheriff, watch the critter so he don't make a break for it. Go on. Go on. Get this off your chest. All right, then, Sheriff. Take a look at this. Huh? Uh, it ain't nothing but a piece of paper with a bank's name on it, as far as I can see. The bank in Sand City. Uh-huh. And this poor cat here dropped it on the floor of Granny Timmons' store. I picked it up myself. That's a talk on lie. Tain't neither. I can prove it by Granny herself. And there was a stranger in the store at the same time. He seen me pick it up. Find him and Granny and they'll tell you the same. Where would I have got a paper like that? You got it after you killed my partner and stole the cash he was carrying. Why, you low down... Break it up! I'll... Break it up for both of you! I'm the law here, and I'll handle this. Now then, Fritz, did you or didn't you have a wrapper like that on you? I didn't. I'll prove you did. Shut up! Now then, Abel, even if Fritz did drop it, what would you say it proved? Hey, well, I just told you, he killed Jake. That's why Jake ain't shown up yet. Where's Jake's body? Ask this polecat. You can't go. Don't, go on, if you fellas don't smooth your hackles down, I'll gag the both of you. Abel, maybe there's something you don't know. What's that? You can't prove murder on nobody till you got the body of the fellow that was killed to show for it. Now, maybe you've got evidence against Fritz, and maybe you haven't. But unless you show me where that Jake is, there's nothing I can do about making an arrest. Then go looking for him. He was coming back on the trail here from the hills. Take a ride out that way and you'll find him. I reckon not. And why not? Sharks, there's been half a dozen fellas come into town the last two days of travel that trail. They'd have seen Jake if he was there, wouldn't they? Hey, then he hit him. A little more of that talk, and I'll fix you so you won't be able to open that big mouth of yours. Uh, you see, Sheriff, now he's threatening me. Can't say as I'm blaming him much. You don't expect a fellow to be told to his face he's a killer and like it, do you? Yes, but... Hold I... on now. Sheriff, you heard this fellow say I done for his partner. The only proof he's got is a piece of paper he claims I dropped, but didn't. Well? Well, what I want to know is this. Are you arresting me or ain't you? Because if you ain't, I ain't staying here to listen to any more of this wild talk. Jail him. Don't see as how I can. Maybe I can suspicion him, but like I just said, that ain't enough. It? What the... the mess, man? What? Mister, up with your hands. Don't show for your guns. I'll do. Deep and catfish, did you see that draw? Faster and chain lightning. You can't get away with this. I'm the law here. No masked fella can just walk in my office and do as he pleases. I'm doing it. You... Quiet. I have news for you. Uh... About a murder. Uh, a murder? Who killed? Who's killed? If you listen, I'll tell you about it. We're listening. Tonto and I found the body of a man who had been shot through the back. Gosh. Whereabouts? I'll get to that later. There's a man around 65, bearded. Looked like he might have been a prospector. Sheriff, that's Jake. That's my partner. I know doggone well it is. Sounds like it. You were saying you had to find the body before you could take action. All right, here's the fellow that found it for you. Now let's see what you're going to do. He can't do anything. Eh? Because I'm not telling where the body was found. Yes, but... By heavens, you will, stranger, or else... As long as I have the drop on you, you can't do anything. If you didn't have listen. the... If you didn't have the drop on me, I... You don't care to hear more? All right. You hold all the aces. Go ahead. The killer likely believed Jake died immediately, but he didn't. He didn't? No. What's that got to do with it? At the place where I found him, he evidently had made an effort to accuse his murderer before dying. What? How could he do that? He took a stone and scratched a message in the earth. What was that message? I'm not sure I care to say. Did it name the killer? That's just it. It didn't. A man who was familiar with the murderer would probably recognize what the message meant. I'm a stranger here. It had no meaning for me. That don't make no difference. What did Jake write? No, I still don't believe I'll tell you that. Sheriff, this masked fellow's up to something. Up to what? Don't you see it, Sheriff? He come here figuring if he reported the murder, he wouldn't be suspicioned. 
All this talk of a message or something that the fellow he found was supposed to have read out don't mean nothing. He's just making that up. What would I have to gain by it? How would I know that? But you've got some reason for it, I'll bet a million. There ain't no reason why you can't tell where Jake is, anyhow. I've said all I'm going to say. If I'm going to be accused, the less said the better. I'm leaving, Sheriff. Don't attempt to follow. Hey, hold on! Don't let him get away, Sheriff. I said don't follow. Come on, Tonto. The Sheriff will be after us in a second. Uh, get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Now, where go? Don't ride too fast. The sheriff has to follow us, because now he's convinced there has been a murder. As far as he knows, we're the only ones who can lead him to the body. Ah, uh, look back. Is anything happening? Ah, uh, 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 him out on the street. Jump up and down. <laughs> He'll get a posse. It'll soon be dark. We'll let them keep us in sight until then. Ah, uh, and then the sheriff is going to get a surprise. Hello, Silver Hoy! The sheriff had no choice but to follow the masked man. A posse was quickly formed and led out to the trail. All through the night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were kept in sight. When it came dark, they disappeared. The sheriff did not realize they'd merely found cover in a grove of trees next to the trail. Here they come, Tonto. Uh, in he big hurry. <laughs> you think you can make the sheriff out? Uh, him ride gray horse. That's the one. He'll be alongside in a moment. Already? Uh, he got rope. Be sure you make your throw true. If we miss on the first attempt, we may not have a chance for another. Uh, make ready. Keep on, fellas! They must have disappeared over that rise ahead! Get up there! Get up! Now, Tonto. Uh, Get up there! Get up! What now? Come on, Silver! Get him up, Scout! Help! Stop on the right road! Help! 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 Hold it, hold it, Scout! Hold on, Get back! Steady, Silver! You're riding with me, Sheriff. Your horse won't be fast enough. Silver's carrying double. Go right into the saddle with you. Let me go. Let me lose. Come on, Silver. Let's go. With the sheriff, their prisoner, the Lone Ranger and Tonto turned around and guided their mounts once more toward the desert, where they found the body of Jake Bevins. All through the night they rode, but in the morning they stopped for a short rest, and the masked man explained his purpose to the lawman. You see, Sheriff, there was nothing else I could do. I couldn't tell you where the body was because the murderer was in the office at the same time. So that was it? Yes. That story of a message written in the earth by Jake before he died wasn't true. Then why in tarnation did you tell it for? To give the killer a motive for riding to the scene of the crime. He believes he has to go there to destroy the evidence before someone else finds it. Gosh, stranger, that's pretty slick. I wouldn't have thought of a stunt like that in a million years. Whoever the murderer is, we should have passed him by now. I wanted to be sure to get there ahead of him. But he doesn't know we came this way. When we get to the place, there are plenty of rocks which will hide us and the horses from his sight. Doggone sorry I took after you with my posse like that. I'm not. Huh? It but had I... to be done that way. And for two reasons. Maybe so, but doggone if I can see him. The first was to give the killer a chance to sneak away in the excitement. Mm. And the second was to make him confident you'd be too busy chasing me for either one of us to trail him. I guess I just ain't got the brains to think of them things. You simply weren't acquainted with the facts. Tonto, how are the horses now? I'm all right. Get plenty rest. Then we'll be on our way for the last lap of our trip. And when we get there, we're going to catch a killer. Here, Silver. Get to the saddle, Sheriff. You bet. Stranger, it's a downright honor to be a straddle a horse like this. Yep. <clears throat> Let's go. Come on, Silver. Get out, Scout. The three men rode until at last they reached the cairn the Lone Ranger and Tonto had built. There they dismounted and concealed themselves and their horses behind the huge boulders that surrounded the cairn. Hours of waiting followed. But finally, the Lone Ranger turned to the sheriff beside him. Sheriff, over there, a rider. Sure enough. Matt Killer, all right. The sneaking varmint. Notice one thing, Sheriff. He claimed in your office that he didn't know where Jake could be. And yet he's riding directly for this group of stones. I noticed that. He won't be able to claim later that he discovered the place by accident. If he tries a story like that, it'll just go the worse for him. Quiet. He'll be here in a moment. Yeah. Get up. Get along with you. Get up there. Get up. Go, go, go there. Go, go. Oh, we're in the dickens. I ain't even laying here. This can. Somebody must have covered him up. I don't see nothing in the ground either. I... I didn't know. No. All right, you lion coyote. 
Place your hands. What do you mean? Come on, Sheriff. Come, Tonto. Uh, be you able. Killing your own partner. Killing the fellow you teamed up with all these years. Why, I ought to hang you on the spot. And after you tried to frame Fritz for this, I wish there was something worse than hanging I could give you. Hey, Sheriff, I, I never killed Jake. I never well, did I that. won't help you now. Unless you had, you'd never have been able to ride directly here. The masked man's right. And it was him that figured this whole thing out. It did. He Careful. Tired. All right, you got me. How'd you know it was me? I never left no trail. Did Jake really write something before he died like you said, stranger? He didn't. And how did you there know? There were several things, Abel. But the chief one that trapped you was your anxiety to trap someone else. I, I do, Sammy. You gave yourself away that day in Mrs. Timmons' store. You claimed that Fritz dropped that paper from his pocket. It seemed to you like too good an opportunity to miss when he came in there with all that cash. Yes, but I... I was almost certain, however, that you would drop the paper. Bless you. This is the first time I could be positive, though. I couldn't be sure until we saw you riding here that the killer hadn't been Fritz after all. What was the other things that made you suspicion him? For one thing, he knew Jake was coming with cash. I couldn't see how anyone else could have known it in time to ride here and kill him. For another, I believe Mrs. Timmons is a good judge of character. I noticed that she allowed Fritz to call her granny, but she resented it when Abel did the same. And that showed clearly that she liked the one better than the other. You can't beat granny for sizing folks up. Can you handle this man alone now, Sheriff? You'll have to ride double on his horse on the way back to town. Don't worry about me. I've handled worse than him a hundred times over. Here, Silver. Here, Count. Then we'll be leaving you. I'll get even for this, mister. Shut up. You ain't going to get even with nobody. Because you're going to stretch him. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.